Item number, SCP-096. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-096 is to be contained in its cell, a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter airtight steel cube, at all times. Weekly checks for any cracks or holes are mandatory. There are to be absolutely no video surveillance or optical tools of any kind inside SCP-096's cell. Security personnel will use pre-installed pressure sensors and laser detectors to ensure SCP-096's presence inside the cell. Any and all photos, video, or recordings of SCP-096's likeness are strictly forbidden without approval from Dr. and O5. Description SCP-096 is a humanoid creature measuring approximately 2.38 meters in height. Subject shows very little muscle mass, with preliminary analysis of body mass suggesting mild malnutrition. Arms are grossly out of proportion with the rest of the subject's body, with an approximate length of 1.5 meters each. Skin is mostly devoid of pigmentation, with no sign of any body hair. SCP-096's jaw can open to four times the norm of an average human. Other facial features remain similar to an average human, with the exception of the eyes, which are also devoid of pigmentation. It is not yet known whether SCP-096 is blind or not. It shows no signs of any higher brain functions, and is not considered to be sapient. SCP-096 is normally extremely docile with pressure sensors inside its cell indicating it spends most of the day pacing by the eastern wall. However, when someone views SCP-096's face, whether it be directly, via video recording, or even a photograph, it will enter a stage of considerable emotional distress. SCP-096 will cover its face with its hands and begin screaming, crying, and babbling incoherently. Approximately one to two minutes after the first viewing, SCP-096 will begin running to the person who viewed its face, who will from this point on be referred to as SCP-096-1. Documented speeds have varied from 35 kilometers an hour to kilometers an hour, and seems to depend on distance from SCP-096-1. At this point, no known material or method can impede SCP-096's progress. The actual position of SCP-096-1 does not seem to affect SCP-096's response. It seems to have an innate sense of SCP-096-1's location. Note, this reaction does not occur when viewing artistic depictions. Upon arriving at SCP-096-1's location, SCP-096 will proceed to kill and data expunged SCP-096-1. 100% of cases have left no traces of SCP-096-1. SCP-096 will then sit down for several minutes before regaining its composure and becoming docile once again. It will then attempt to make its way back to its natural habitat. Due to the possibility of a mass chain reaction, including breach of Foundation secrecy and large civilian loss of life, retrieval of subjects should be considered alpha priority. Dr. has also petitioned for an immediate termination of SCP-096. Termination order has been approved. Audio log from Interview 096-1 Interviewer Dr. Interviewed Captain Retired Former Commander of Retrieval Team Zulu-9A Retrieval Incident 096-1A Begin Log Captain it always sucks ass to get initial retrieval duty. You have no idea what the damn thing is capable of, besides what jacked up information the field techies can scrape up, and you're lucky if they even tell you the whole story. They told us to bag and tag. Didn't tell us jack shit about not looking at the damn thing. Doctor, could you describe the mission please? Captain, yeah, sorry. We had two choppers, one with my team, and one on backup with Zulu-9B and Dr. We spotted the target about two clicks north of our patrol path. I'm guessing he wasn't facing our direction, else he would have taken us out then and there. Doctor, your report says SCP-096 didn't react to the cold. It was minus degrees Celsius. Captain, actually, it was minus And yes, it was butt naked and didn't so much as shiver. Anyway, we landed, approached the target, and Corporal got ready to bag it. That's when the doctor called. I turned to answer it, 
and that's what saved me. The target must have turned, and my whole squad saw it. Doctor, that's when SCP-096 entered an agitated emotional state. Captain, yep, sorry, got the willies for a second. Doctor, that's alright. Captain, yeah, well, I never saw its face. My squad did, and they paid for it up the ass. Doctor, could you describe it a little more, please? Captain, yeah, yeah, it started screaming at us and crying. Not animal roaring, though. Sounded exactly like a person. Really f***ing creepy. We started firing when it picked up Corporal and ripped off his leg. God, he was screaming for our help. F*** A. Anyway, we were blowing chunks out of the target, round after round. Didn't do jack shit. I almost lost it when it started Data expunged him. Doctor, that's when you ordered the use of an AT-4 HEDT launcher. Captain, an anti-tank gun. Started carrying it ever since SCP got loose. I've seen those tear through tanks like tissue paper. Did the same thing to the target. Doctor, there was significant damage to SCP-096? Captain, it didn't even f***ing flinch. It kept tearing apart my squad, but with half of its torso gone. He draws a large half circle across his torso. Doctor, but it was taking damage. Captain, if it was, it wasn't showing it. It must have lost all its organs, all its blood, but it didn't acknowledge any of it. Its bone structure wasn't hurt at all, though. It kept tearing my squad apart. Doctor, so no actual structural damage. How many rounds would you say were fired at SCP-096? Captain, at the least, a thousand. Our door gunner kept his GAU-19 on it for at least 20 seconds. 20 seconds. That's 650 caliber rounds pumped into the thing. Might as well have been spitting at it. Doctor, this is when Zulu-9B arrived. Captain, yeah, and my squad was gone. Zulu-9B managed to get the bag over its head, and it just sat down. We got it into the chopper and got it here. I don't know how I never saw its face. Maybe God or Buddha or whoever thought I should live. The jackass. Doctor, we have obtained an artist's depiction of SCP-096's face. Would you like to view it? Captain, pauses. You know, after hearing that thing's screams and the screams of my men, I don't think I want to put a face to what I heard. No. Just... No. Doctor, alright, I believe we are done here. Thank you, Captain. Chairs are heard moving, and footsteps leave the room. Captain is confirmed to have left interview room 22. Doctor, let this be on record that I am formally requesting SCP-096 be terminated as soon as possible. End log. Documentation 0961 of Experiment 0961. Experiment 0961 is headed by Dr. Dan. Purpose is to test SCP-096's abilities while obtaining complete physical description of SCP-096. D-9031 is a 32-year-old convicted felon and former tattoo artist. D-9031 is placed inside Bathyspear 303A, which is then lowered into the Tonga Trench off the coast of New Zealand. The following was recorded via video surveillance inside Bathyspear 303A between it and Dr. Dan's control site on the New Zealand mainland. Bathyspear 303A reaches final depth of 10,800 meters. D-9031. It stopped. What now? Dr. Dan, do you feel fine? No sickness? Anything? D-9031. My ears hurt. Dr. Dan, that should be expected. Now, on your left should be a steel container. Open it, and there will be a manila folder holding several photographs. Open it and describe the first photograph, please. D-9031 complies. The camera is located so the photograph cannot be seen. D-9031. Nothing. It's an empty cell. Dr. Dan. Thank you. Please set this photograph down in the receptacle to your right and look at the next photograph. D-9031. It's the same cell, but there's a foot in it, I think. Dr. Dan. Describe it, please. D-9031. Uh, it's pale and bony. Sort of creepy, actually. 
Dr. Dan, place the photograph in the receptacle, face down, and look at the next one. D9031. Okay. Pause. Oh, shit. Dr. Dan, describe the photograph. D9031. It's a, I don't know, some creepy person. Dr. Dan, describe the photograph, please. D9031. Hell, man. He's pale, has white eyes, and something f***ed up is happening with his mouth. What the hell is this thing? At this point, approximately 1332 standard time, Dr. Dan and Experiment Control is notified that SCP-096 has breached containment. The fastest path to SCP-096-1 has been cleared of civilians and other image capturing devices, and SCP-096 is now being tracked by satellites via tracking collar. Dr. Dan. On your right, there should be another steel container. Open it. SCP-096-1. It's a pad of paper and a pencil. Dr. Dan. Yes. Please draw a sketch of the photograph you saw. SCP-096-1 mumbles an expletive and spends the next 20 minutes drawing a sketch of the photograph. At the time of completion, SCP-096 is confirmed to be kilometers away from SCP-096-1. SCP-0961. I'm done. Dr. Dan. Good. Place the drawing in the receptacle on your left and close the door. SCP-0961 complies and the sketch leaves Bathysphere 303A in a watertight buoyancy container. The other photographs are then incinerated in the onboard incinerator. SCP-0961. What now? Dr. Dan. Please stand by. 40 minutes pass. SCP-096 is now confirmed to be at SCP-096-1's position and is diving. Transponder signal ends at 9,339 meters as pressure goes beyond the device's operational limits. The camera shows the bathysphere shaking slightly. From SCP-096-1's reaction, it is assumed SCP-096 is on the hull and is visible through the viewport. SCP-096-1. Oh, f***. Shit, shit, shit. What the fuck is that? Video and audio feed is cut as the hull of Bathysphere 303A is breached. SCP-096 is recovered by Surface Recovery Team Foxtrot 303A without incident. Sketch of SCP-096 is also recovered, and a quick test confirms no hostile reaction from SCP-096. Sketch is sent to experiment control on New Zealand, while SCP-096 is moved to permanent containment. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-095, The Atomic Adventures of Ronnie Raygun, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist. <laughs>